Hey guys, Peter here to do an album review. Today I'm here to tell you about the latest from F and Emmer, A Dream of Wilderness, out November 19th on Napalm Records. The album has 11 tracks, 50 minutes in length, and this is the band's third full length studio album. They are a French symphonic death metal band. As far as the design goes, this record has an old school approach. Side A, side B. Both sides have an intro track, both sides have a lot of similarity so they're not divided in terms of the quality or approach because they're actually very cohesive and balanced not just within themselves but from one into the other this allows you the album overall to work across a multitude of platforms the fluidity of the record how dynamic it is how continuous it moves doesn't change regardless of how you are approaching this album so definitely a plus for the overall experience that it gives once you move into the soundscape this record definitely has that spinal cord of symphonic death metal. That is the starting point. But they added a lot of folk influences on this album and that changes a little bit of the aroma, that changes a little bit of the essence of the record and has a huge impact in the overall atmosphere. Now I felt like there were three elements that pushed that folkiness into the forefront more than any other. And that is the symphonic elements, the guitars, and then the lyrical content, the theme of the record itself. These three have the ability to make this album not just feel folky, sound folky, and create an atmosphere that surrounds it, becoming very all-encompassing, if you will. Now, the guitars and symphonic elements are not necessarily working in the same lane, they're in separate lanes, but they're doing pretty much the same thing, song in and song out. They're not just creating melodies, they're not just driving the songs, they're not just driving the album, but they're also impacting the atmosphere and they're giving the record not only this folky vibe, but also a very cinematic approach across every single track. That stays very consistent. So those are two elements that almost levitate the sound off of the record. Then on the opposite end, you have the drums, bass, and vocals. These three try to ground the record as much as possible so that you don't have an album that becomes unbalanced. They try to find this fine line and stay within it so you have an album that's symphonic, you have an album that's cinematic, that has a lot of melody but at the same time still carries enough heaviness so that the album stays consistent, it stays cohesive and it creates a balanced sound, a robust sound all around. Within the heaviness of the record, I felt like the drums could have been slightly heavier. I would have liked to see them a little bit higher in the mix. Certain pockets, you feel it, they're trying to come through, but overall they don't stay very consistent as far as heaviness is concerned. And I really felt for an album that has this much symphonic drive behind it, there's certain key points within the record that you really need a little bit of a break. You need a stop. Uh, you, you need some heaviness to come in, you need some aggression to come in to completely change the eyesight of the listener so you don't feel like you're going down this flat lane, th this linear path from beginning to end with very little oscillations. I really felt like the drums could have done that because the vocals try to stay consistent and they try to stay uh, linear all the way through. So you need something from the heavier side of the record as far as the sound goes that creates those ebbs and flows if the vocals are not doing. Now there's some nuances with the vocals, there's some clean vocals on this record, but those are really nuances. Those are just sprinkles here and there, not enough to really change the eyesight of the listener or change your overall perception of the record. And I felt like if the symphonic elements and guitars are pushing the album in one direction and staying very consistent doing so, you need one element that kind of becomes that, that, that piece that changes the overall system, that changes the, how the machine operates and the drums could have definitely been that had they been a little bit higher in the overall mix. It would make the sound of this record feel more potent you could have still been driven, it could still been melodic, it could have still been cinematic, but I felt it would have been a lot heavier overall, making the sound feel even more robust than what it currently is. As far as the overall experience of this album, I like what they did with this record. I like the design of the album itself. I felt like it really played towards the strengths of the album. And I like the overall construction of the record outside of the issue with the drums. This album to me feels like they're coming into a zone and they understand exactly what they want out of themselves and what they want out of their sound. I feel like we've heard these elements in the previous albums, but perhaps not as well defined as we saw them on this record. It almost felt to me that they were not afraid of finally shedding a little bit of that, that their skin that they had and just fully show the listener 
what they've always had there, but perhaps not as noticeable. This album removes a little bit of those borders, removes a little bit uh, of that facade, if you will, and becomes a little bit more naked to the eye. It's a lot more apparent to the listener exactly where this band is going as far as their sound is concerned. And this is a band that's tried to push that melodic drive, that cinematic sound into their records without losing as much of their heaviness as possible. As far as favorite songs are concerned, I want to start off with La Hado de la Meduse. Uh, this song is phenomenal. I mean, you're going to get this song twice on the record. You're going to get it in English and you're going to get it in French. I love both. It's a phenomenal track. It's my favorite track on the album. It has a very melodic, symphonic drive to it. And then that heavy, folky influence really takes control of the song itself. It adds so much energy to the track. The drums and vocals pack the heaviness. They are the elements that really ground this track, that give it that bass line that's very important, which counterbalances the symphonic drive in the guitar melodies that the track has. This song is a little bit of a microcosms of what the whole record is all about. If you listen to this track, you have the idea of what this album really has to offer as far as the sound is concerned. I love the dynamics that it has. I love the clean vocals that they introduced in this song. Uh, it was just enough to really perk your ears was enough to almost force you a reset, but at the same time, not enough to really make you feel like the track was completely different from everything around it. It was a nice little nuance, was a nice little add-on that made the track interesting, that changed a little bit, but not too much. It allowed the song to continue to move and feel very consistent within its walls. Next, you have Strider. Uh, the instrumental intro really pushes you deep into the track. It prolongs the execution of the song, if you will, and it has a little bit of an underlying darkness. This is a track that hides that darkness really well because it's very melodic. The guitars, uh, the synths, all of that stuff is really creating a lot of melody, and that melody really permeates across the entire track and becomes one of the, ex the driving experiences of the song. So I feel like it's hard to tell where their darkness really exists, but if you're paying attention to the lyrics, this is like a first person almost narrator telling a story, a story of himself. If you take it from that approach and if you pay attention to the lyrics and you pay attention to how the song is built, you find the darkness within it. Uh, the melody tries to hide it, like I said, but at certain key points it's, it's nearly impossible to do so and it kind of pops up a little bit more into the forefront. The bass sound on this track is phenomenal. I really enjoyed the bass. I felt like it helped define the song. A song that has all of this melody, it needs to contain it somehow. And, and the drums do it in certain cases. The vocals try to keep some consistent moving along. And I felt like the bass was the one really coming in and putting some borders around, uh, around the song to have a much better construction, to sound better, to be more connected all around. Next you have A Dream of Wilderness. The drums on this track become the foundation. I felt like this perhaps was the song where the drums had a little bit more of a push they had a little bit more of a force behind them, maybe not necessarily consistently from the beginning to the end, but overall the, the, the feeling that you get at the end of the track is that the drums were a lot more powerful on this song than in some of the previous tracks. And that really helped establish this track. It really helped build the roadmap for the song itself. The guitars are driving the melody, they're driving the experience and you're going along with it. The consistency of the, the vocals and the consistency that the vocals give throughout the entire track allows this song to feel very connected because this is a track that's not necessarily linear. There's a little bit of a valley here. This song goes into a very atmospheric dip towards the middle and that dip stretches out for a very long period of time and this makes the song feel longer. You're going through this crossing of the desert almost. You, you really get deep within yourself and you get deep within the track. The atmosphere of the track takes, takes full control and you get lost a little bit in the, in the instrumental portion of it and you almost forget about how heavy the song was before because you're going through this almost melancholic portion of the track that really resets your senses and really resets the song itself. Then once you get at the end of that, the song brings you back to how it was in the beginning, allowing the second half of the song to feel heavier than the first half because of that stretch was so long that you almost forgot about it. So the second half of the song is very balanced and it's very equal to the first half, but because of that melancholic stretch in the middle, that atmospheric stretch in the middle, that second half feels very powerful. So it allows the song to close on a heavy note, on a strong note. This is it, F and M or A Dream of Wilderness out November 19th on Napalm Records. Let me know your thoughts on the band, on the singles. Use the comment section below. 
I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care, guys.